Hey guys, I want us to have a look at viewports and cameras. So at the moment when we run our game, we're seeing the entire room, but as I'm sure you know, that's not how most games work. Generally at any time, we are only shown a fraction of the level. And the view that we have, it sort of follows the player around so that when we move, we can see more of the game world. And we're going to implement something like that. So while the tools that GameMaker has to help us with this, they aren't overly complicated. There's a few similar terms and it can be easy to get them confused, so I want to illustrate what they mean before we start using them. The first two terms that I want to explain are the room and the game window. So the room is something we've already explored, it's basically the game world or a level of the game. It has all of the stuff for that level, it has all of the objects, all of the tiles, our game world. On the other hand, we have the game window. And this is the window that the player sees when they run the game. So the size of the window in the player's monitor. So they can be exactly the same. They can have the same width and height. And if this is the case, then we'll be able to see everything in the room and there won't be any scaling. But we don't want to do that. In fact, we only want to show a small window into our room. So to do this in GameMaker, we're going to use cameras and viewports. So the camera is going to be our window. Its dimensions and position will determine how much of the room we see, what's displayed to the player. Now, and this is where I've seen people get a bit confused, the viewport is the area on the screen where the camera view is displayed. So the viewport is basically the player's game window. Now, the size of the camera and the viewport, again, they can be the same, but they don't have to be. We can have a viewport be twice the size of the camera's view. And this is one way to scale up the game. So for our purposes, for our farming RPG, the viewer resolution isn't super important to the gameplay. We're not really going to be hiding anything from the player. We don't really need to confine the view to specific dimensions. So I don't want to spend too much time on it right now because I'm expecting we might change this later. I've basically just chosen some arbitrary numbers that I think look pretty good with our assets and will be okay for you guys who might have different sized monitors. So these will be the dimensions for our camera. It's going to have a width of 750 pixels and a height of 420. So the camera, this is our view into the game world. This is how much of the room we're going to be showing at any one time. And for the game window or the viewport, we're going to be scaling it up. And you might have noticed something here. So these numbers, they're multiples of each other. And this is super important because if these aren't multiples, if these ratios between these two numbers, they're not the same, and you do something like this instead, your game is not going to scale correctly. So instead of this, you're going to get something like this. So this is why we have to make sure that these numbers are all multiples of each other. And we also want to make sure that we're not scaling in fractions of a number because we can end up getting pixel distortions because the game tries to render half pixels, which it can't really do. So if you're scaling up by two times, then one pixel, something that takes up just one pixel, is going to end up taking two, two by two. But if we're scaling up by 2.5, then it's going to try and draw that one pixel at two and a half pixels. The engine is not going to like this and it's going to have to do some guesswork. It might try and render that one pixel at just two pixels or three and the result will be an arbitrary mess. So with all that said, let's jump into GameMaker. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is come into the room and over here in this panel, let's just move this up. In the properties panel, this is where we define how large our room is. And in here are the viewports and the cameras. So we can change this later. I'm just going to come straight into the viewports. And we're going to hit enable viewports. I'm going to open up the first one. It doesn't really matter which one we choose, but we'll just use the first one, starting at zero. And we're going to make this one visible. So this means that when we run our game, what this camera sees is going to be visible on our viewport on the game window and you can have multiple views visible at the same time and you can have different dimensions and they can be showing two parts of the game at the same time so this could be how you set up a split screen or something like that but anyway we're just using one and here is where we define the dimensions of the camera of how much of our game world that we can see at any one time at the moment, as you can see, it's the same as the room, which is why we see everything when we run the game. Which is why even with this enabled, if we run the game, it'll be the same as before, and we'll see everything in the room. But we're going to change this. So we're going to change this to those dimensions that we set before. So for the camera, we had 750. 
and 420. And for the viewport, which is the player window. And actually, let me just show you what it would look like if these were the same. You'll see that the game window, take note of this size of the game window compared to what we had before, right? It's just a smaller window, right? Now, if we scale this up by two, we're going to get a larger game window, a larger viewport. There we go. You can see at the moment it's not following any objects, it's staying right there. Its position is zero, zero. The, uh, the origin for the cameras is anchored at the top left. So if we change this, we're changing the position of the camera. Okay, so we're gonna make the camera follow an object. So we're gonna click here and click object player. We're not going to touch the speeds, we're just going to keep that at the default. But as for the horizontal and vertical border, so these numbers control how far from the edge of the camera's view that our player needs to be before the camera will start to move. So if the player is centered in the view, how far away from the edge of the border does it need to be before the camera itself will move? So the lower the number, the more the player is going to have to move. So if we put exactly half of the width and the height, then that means the camera will always be moving because the player is always going to be, because it's always going to be in the center, 375 pixels away from the left and right sides of the view. So for now, let's just put that. All right, and let's have a look. Mm, so we can't really tell because of our background. So let's just, I'm going to just quickly make a pattern. So I'm going to tile this as the background so that we don't just have one big green background. We have nothing to anchor ourselves to see if the view is moving. So instead of a color, which is what we had it set to, I'm going to put a sprite. So you can see it's only a pretty small sprite, but we can tile it. Ugh, looks hideous, <laughs> but that'll do. Okay, let's just run the game now and see if the view is moving. All right, so it's moving. And I hope that doesn't hurt your head too much. All right, so this is a really easy way to set up the view. We're actually gonna do one other thing so for our camera, we don't need it too complicated. It will probably just be following the player all the time. But if we have any cutscenes, we might want to be able to pan the camera around. So I'm actually going to create an object. I'm going to call this, I'm actually going to just call this camera. Sometimes what I like to do with these sort of meta kind of objects that aren't really a part of the game world, they're really just for us, for the programmer. There's only ever going to be one of these and I just won't put the obj prefix just so that when I'm referring to it in code, I know that I'm controlling that important meta object. We're not going to be assigning a sprite to this or anything. It's just going to be the thing we use to control the camera. Let's come back into the room and let's drag in the camera. And in the viewport, instead of following the player, we're going to follow the camera. And then when we come back into the camera, let's just close this so we have a bit more room. We're going to come into the step event and we're going to make the camera follow the player. So we have a bit of abstraction here, but this camera will be following our camera object and then that object will be following the player. So this way we can control what it's doing. If we don't want it to be following the player, we can make it follow something else or we can make it act independently. So actually what I'm going to do is come into the create event first. And we're going to set up a variable called following. And we'll set this to the player just so that we can change this later if we wanted to follow something else. All right, and what I'm going to do is just put x equals following.x. So this will be the player's x, whatever the player's x position, that's what that little dot operator means. We're getting the x coordinate of the player. And the y equals following.y. There we go, so it's working the same as before. So now, 
I want to do what I mentioned about the borders. I want to give the player a bit of legroom so that when we move, we can move a little bit without the camera moving itself. So we're going to have that horizontal and vertical border. So let's come into the create event and we're going to define two more variables. We're going to go h border equals, and I'm just going to put 60. You can put more or less if it feels a bit better to you. And v border equals 30. All right, so we'll come back into the step and we're going to change this. So instead of having it exactly equal the player's x position, I want it to stay within a boundary. So I don't want it to be any less than the player's position minus our horizontal border. And I don't want it to get any more than the player's x position plus the horizontal border. I want it to be within 60 at all times. And the same goes for the Y. So we're going to use the function clamp. So we're going to go clamp. And so down here it says we're going to clamp a value between a minimum and a maximum value. So the value that we're clamping is the X value of our camera. And we're going to clamp it between two variables. So we're going to clamp it between the player's X position, like I said before, minus the horizontal border. So minus 60 and the same in the positive. And we're going to have the same for Y. So I'm just going to copy and paste this and change these to Y and V. And this one. All right, let's have a look. So there we go. So now we've got a bit of leg room for our movement. So the last little fun thing I want to do, I want to make it so that if we're pressing a button that it won't be following the player and we can just move the camera freely. So I'm going to go, I'm going to make up a variable. I'm going to call it move cam. I'm going to make this equal to our keyboard check of the key. And I'm just going to make this the C key. So this variable is going to be true or false. If it's true, then I'm going to say, I want to move the camera. So if move cam, I'm actually just going to copy and paste some code because we've done this before in the player's movement. So I've set it up this way so that it's familiar from before, from when we were doing the player movement. So we have our input variables here and they're equal to the keyboard checks for ADWS instead of the arrow keys this time. And we'll have the inputs here. So this, this little sum here is going to be equal to one, zero or minus one. And we're just going to times this by six. In the player we had speed, but I'm just going to put a number. We don't really need these variables here. If you want, we can just cut this and put these directly in. And delete this. And it should work exactly the same. So this is gonna let us move the camera around when we're pressing these buttons and with a speed of six. And this is only gonna happen if we're pressing the C key. So the last thing we have to do is just say else. So if we're not pressing the key, then go ahead and follow the player. And I'll just tab this forwards. Oops, I've done this in the wrong order. This should be down and this one should be up. All right, let's run the game. All right, so let's press C and then hit those keys. There we go. So we can move it around independently. And if we stop pressing the C button, it should snap back to the player. All right, great. So that's it for the camera. So that's all we're going to do today. Now that we've got the camera all set up, in the next video, we'll be doing tiles and auto tiling. So I'll see you guys next time.